everyone to join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Hopefully everyone had a chance last night to see the amazing uh, star. I know out in the country there, there was, I think, more our population dub doubled based on how many cars were out looking and stopping. But good morning. We have an agenda in front of us. If there's no changes or corrections, I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Gillespie. Sean. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. We have our claims reports. Uh, moves on to our consent agenda. If there's no uh, uh, corrections to that, I'd ask for a motion to approve as printed. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. That being motion and second. Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Takes us right into the opportunity for public comment. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to address the board concerning any issues, would be the time and place. Seeing none, is there any comment that the board needs to address? Otherwise, we'll keep moving on our agenda. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to take the opportunity to wish people here and that are visiting us via Zoom or technology a very Merry Christmas. And hopefully that 21 will be another breakthrough and we can put 2020 behind us. Very good. With that, we'll move on to our uh, regular business items. And now that I have the, I think, correct agenda in front of us, as opposed to last week. First item will be, as it's not 9.05, our auditor. Good morning. Good morning. So we need to do some contingency transfers to clean up for the end of the year. Um, the first one is going to be to the Board of Commissioners for $12,000 um, due to publishing cost that increased. There was a lot of advertising that we did that wasn't accounted for. Um, a contingency transfer. This should be the final one for elections. We had final bills come in from ES and S. Um, then there was little mileage things, but this should be the final postage and whatnot from the recount. Um, contingency transfer to the highway shop bond interest for $200. Earlier in the year, the treasurer had recorded a fee from the um, U.S. Bank, and this it hit the interest, so we have to put the 200 in there to get that cleaned up. Um, mm. Contingency transfer to information and technology, 72,000. Um, there was COVID upgrades that were necessary, so that brought his budget a little short. Um, public welfare needs a contingency transfer in the amount of $20. We just underestimated the utility cost. And then a contingency transfer to the insurance premium, the 101-416-7421 in the amount of $9,000. It was an additional general ledger premium. You've heard the uh, report and request. Is there any questions? Otherwise, I'd ask for a motion. Move for approval, Mr. Chair. Second. Any comments, questions? Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Okay, so then secondly, we need to appoint an appraisal committee for the um, parcel that was surplus up in the consent agenda three the appraisal committee will need to be three Lincoln County property owners any board member willing to volunteer when uh, where is this at uh, in Hudson in Hudson uh, is it something that I can do before the fifth or is it is not? it well you can even do it after the fifth you'll still be a uh, resident yeah resident you're still a resident okay I, I can I could take right, that. thank you yeah, I can take that. yep I could be one person anyway. Anybody else? I guess I haven't done one for a while. Okay.
Todd. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I was gonna I was gonna give it to <laughs> to Jim and <laughs> so he could get down to us. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll let you all Jim. So that will be it until my hearing. So we'll need a motion for those oh, to be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Is there a motion to those for those three? So moved, Mr. Chairman Gillespie. Uh, second. Second. Thank you, Sean. Commissioner Aaron's. Yes. Commissioner Gillespie. Yes. Commissioner Landine. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. We still got some time before the 905, so we'll keep moving here. Julia, good morning. Good morning. Several things for you this morning. Um, the first is, it's my understanding, um, per SCCL 338-1-22, we need to reappoint our veteran services off officer formally um, for the next four years. That appointment would be good through the first Monday in January of um, 2024. You've heard the request. Is there a motion to that effect? It's my pleasure to appoint Susan Lyons back for another four years. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Commissioner... Uh, Schmidt, uh, Commissioner Landine for the uh, second. Any questions? Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Okay. Um, next is to accept the resignation of Jess Wicker, full time deputy register of deeds effective the 25th of December. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second, Gillespie. Thank you. Uh, Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Uh, next is to uh, promote Sean Steffen from heavy equipment operator to foreman in the highway shop at twenty-five ninety-four per hour, effective the 13th of December. I'll ask for a motion to that effect. So moved. Second? Second. Thank Gillespie. you. Gillespie. Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Great. Um, next on the agenda would be the Sheriff's Office um, position request. So over this year alone, we have lost uh, seven part-time transporters. We currently have only three. Um, it's my understanding that two, three, four are necessary at a time. Um, so this request is for a full-time transporter to ensure that someone's available. Um, this person will al also be backup for the 24-7 um, uh, programs and then also courthouse security. And the cost would be relatively the same because the funds are there. We're just having a consistent person. And that's okay. with the insurance and all the STRS benefits and... Um, there may be a little bit just based on the, the insurance selection, but all in all, it's going to be a wash. And logistically speaking, it will be a better situation. What are your thoughts, anybody? So we need somebody to drive prisoners around and be for safety purposes, so uh, I think that's just... I, I, we're also required to do uh, video court. Because of COVID, we're not bringing them down here. So I have to have somebody up at the video court in Sioux Falls daily, and I also need to have people for, here for security. So I just I, don't, I don't have enough people. Commissioner, is, I, did I hear a motion? Yes. Thank you. Is I'll there, second that. Thank you. Um, so in other words, he's not, he or she will not be sitting around. There's plenty of things to do if, if it isn't transporting somebody. Yeah, they'll, they'll be busy. Busy. With Very COVID, our part-time Drop, drop. yep. Uh, any other questions? Sean, please call the roll. So it's a motion to advertise for that position. Is that correct? Yes. Um, right. Well, one, it would be to add an FTE. Add and the then FTE. with your approval, we'll just start recruiting right away if that's okay with you. Is that fine correct. with your motion? Thank yes. you. And your second? Yes. Thank you. John, uh, clear? Perfect. Let's go. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Um, next is to reclassify a position in the, um, the highway department. Um, currently budgeted, um, Terry has two um, promotional opportunities from light to heavy. However, he'd like to use one of those promotional opportunities to um, uh, reclassify a heavy equipment operator into a heavy equipment specialist position 
because the individual currently um, is doing some, the majority of the time spent fabricating. So it's have, have um, higher level responsibilities. This would be consistent of how other people are classified in the, in the department. Is that a clear enough for to move forward, or we move need for approval on on that uh, request for reclassifications, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Thank you. A motion and a second. Any other questions? Sean, Commissioner Aaron's yes. Commissioner Gillespie yes. Commissioner Landine yes. Commissioner Schmidt yes. Commissioner Poppins yes. Okay. Lastly, I believe is um, the transfer um, from. Um, the transfer station supervisor into buildings um, and grounds. Um, John Rombo and I have had lots of discussion about this, what this individual will do. Um, based on those responsibilities, the position, um, a job description has been, been made, a classification has been met, it's gonna be a 106. The classification is less than what the incumbent um, is currently making. So my question to the commission is would you like to keep the individual at the current compensation or move him to the new classification? Well, at the time that we said we were gonna close the transfer station, we said it would be at no prejudice to any full-time employee. Okay. That, that has been our policy in the past. So it, are you uh, willing to motion then that it gets, stays at the uh, same and what will we have to, we'll still classify him at a different? So the new, the new position would be a lead maintenance worker at a grade 106, um, and then that would be under building and grounds. So, and, and that's less? Yeah. But we have to deviate from that yes. in order to dissipate any prejudice to. So we need guidance Hansen. on what the motion needs to, to specify is how we address that. The motion needs to be at least that he stays where he yeah. was. Yeah. Compensation remains the same. So, Commissioner Ernst, do you offer that motion? Yeah, I mean, he, here's what my motion would be, is that we set that position at whatever Mr. Hansen's current salary is, and then he'll be moved over into that position, correct? Okay, and I, I, mean, I think that works. Is there that a works. second to that? I mean, I'll see, second that. Okay. And then for the purposes of discussion, I guess I'll ask this. Does that create any problems in the future, either currently or in the future, with yes. deviating from what we have in our policy manual as for the salary? Or yes. do we need to create a new position here with a new title in order to be able to deviate from the 59 to the 63? So in classifying positions, how we built it is whatever the um, the essential function of the position is. That's why I worked with John in this, so that would be a 106. So if you wanted to keep the same compensation, by all means, he'll, he'll just be at the top of the range. Um, he, there'll be no room in the range for advancement here within the next couple of years until right. the range catches up with them. Does that answer your question? It does, partially. Okay. Um, the other issue, yeah. So if we can do a 106 at 63,000, yep. that would meet the intent of my motion for right now. And that agrees with your second? I'll, I'll agree with that. Okay. And the the applicant or the, the moon is acceptable to that? The person taking the job? Um, yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sean, I think we can go ahead with a vote then. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sheriff, I think we have time yet. Sorry. Okay, just an update on the stuff I brought you a couple weeks ago on the dispatch council. I did get shot down from the state on the additional money I do appreciate, obviously there were some calls made by the board because I received calls that you guys were supporting it. Um, after researching this a little bit and talking to, sh to the auditor, so the money from uh, CARES that is, we've currently received for dispatch went into the dispatch fund, the 911 fund, and it has to be spent on 911. So our current balance is actually $662,000 with another $90,000 coming from CARES. So I asked uh, Todd Baldwin 
to go back to Sioux Falls 2 and see if there's anything we could do at a less expensive option to, what, to upgrading our councils, which I'll have him come up and explain them. At the Zetron system, we're told is apples to apples to the Motorola system. Motorola is, is obviously a known brand name, so I'd, but it, the price is considerably more for the Motorola. So he, he went to them and got a, a price that would upgrade our Zetron, our councils to the mobile system that we were requesting for, it's 377 is the, t the top. You see the recorder on here? That was not even included in the 675 for Motorola, which we also need. Since then, the state of South Dakota, the 911 fund for the state is awarding us $116,067.72 for dispatch center upgrades. So we'd have that in addition to the roughly $730,000. So it'd be my recommendation, what I'm asking is a motion to approve the purchase of the Zetron to upgrade our system. Because as I've told you, our, our old system is out of date and no longer serviced. This would take us 20 years. So that this would this would get us where we needed to be at no uh, no cost to the taxpayers of Lincoln County, and uh, uh, seems like a good fit for what we were looking for. You've heard the request. Is there any comments, questions? Otherwise? Just a question. Yeah. Is this now is this Vtron system, Todd? Is that equivalent to Motorola? Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve the purchase. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any other questions? Todd, uh, just a couple questions, Mr. Chairman. Is How old is the current system? And you've been kind of piecing it together, right, Todd, for how many years? We did an upgrade in 2000. Okay, so 20 years old. Yeah. Right, and I, I think you'd mentioned that a while back, and uh, so that's you're just you're kind of piecing oh, it together. Yeah. Sorry, thanks, Todd. If you, oh, I've got the polite reminder. Yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. that is. Yeah, I remember all that. So, yep. our tractor in the grove, I believe, Dale Long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, any other questions? So, uh, Sheriff. You you take the hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. Does that go towards this through as well, or is that just extra funds for us to use for? Upgrade? Honestly, it's it's ec the 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 whole whole ballpark plan yeah. is to upgrade the furniture in yeah. there as well. Yeah, which is we just had somebody there. It's, it's another forty or fifty thousand dollars, but there's seven hundred thousand dollars in there, so we can do every upgrade we need and it literally have a new dispatch center. At no cost. At no cost to the taxpayers. Is there a timeline in which you have to have that stuff? Next November. Next, next November. year. Next November. Yeah. Very good. Good. For the 116000 How about the other? Uh, nope, because we already have that money. We already have it. Okay. The, the motion might need to include a motion to supplement the budget because this is not budgeted for. Mm. <clears throat> Here comes the boss. <laughs> I brought all my backup. <laughs> so how, I think separate motion. Well, we're probably not going to pay for it this year. Right. So right. I'll wait and do the supplement next year. Okay. Sure. All right. Are we good? Yep. Sean, please call the roll. Um, just a question. Yes. This is to authorize the purchase of Zetron from Sioux Falls two-way for $377,785, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. That's, that's your motion, then second. Correct? Yep. We're good. Yeah. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Thank you.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, Commissioner Aarons, do you want to take the lead on the Garno study? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So yep. I believe a couple <laughs> weeks ago, we had discussed the way forward with regard to uh, our prisoner population. At that time, I had discussed uh, in length what was going on with Minnehaha County and Lincoln Counties. Specifically, Sheriff's went, or, uh, Sheriff Milstead uh, at our meeting at which Sheriff Swenson was present with myself and Commissioner Schmidt had requested that if we're going to move forward with further discussions with Minnehaha County, he would like to know essentially how much runway he is going to have in terms of being able to handle projected prisoner population. So what we had decided as a group internally that met that day that we would refresh the Cooper, or excuse me, the Bill Garno study uh, with regard to the prisoner population. So uh, we went, I went and talked to Mr. Garnos. He gave us an estimate. The estimate came in at $7,200. And so my motion today is I'm asking for approval of the proposal submitted by Bill Garnos to update the inmate population trends and projections for Lincoln and Minnehaha counties. Is there a second? Second. Oh, oh. okay. Okay. Any questions on that? Who is the second on that? Gillespie. Gillespie. Thank you. Sean, go ahead and call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? No. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Anything else on that, Commissioner Aarons? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We have a little ordinance codification proposal, Sean. You want to take the lead on that, please? Yes. Back in October, the Planning and Zoning Director and the Chief Civil Deputy State's Attorney and I met about the uh, ordinance book as it is displayed on our website. And the problem that we discussed was that if somebody doesn't know what they're looking for, it is very difficult for them to find it. And we want to solve this problem. Um, I reached out to American Legal and they sent a proposal to do a full codification, a legal review, as well as um, their search web display, which has a lot of ability to search, is completely ADA um, compatible, which would match up with our new website upgrades. And they can do so for uh, an estimated 350 pages for $7,595. And the additional cost per page, what was that again? I read through the that. additional 20? cost for future is yeah. $22, $22 per page unless it has images within the ordinance. So like um, the International Building Code ordinances that we passed this year, those have some images and that would add an additional $10 per page. And then after the first year of the web hosting, it's $495 per year to host that web, web page. And this would be the same system that you would find on like the city of Sioux Falls and in their proposal in the share file and the public information packet for anybody who's in, in the audience here. Um, there's a list of other uh, counties and municipalities in South Dakota that use this product. I did not see the actual document that would come for the contract it would come later. This is just their proposal. So motion today would be to accept their proposal. Yes. Is there a motion of that effect? So well, move, the, Mr. Um, Chair. Um, yes. Oh, no, may no. I have the motion to approve and authorize the chair to execute the ordinance codification proposal from American Legal Publishing Corporation? So yes. move, Mr. Chairman. I'll, Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you. Any other questions on that? All right, Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Thank you, Sean. That's excellent. Hey, you have 15 minutes. This didn't take me very long anyway. Um, so it's just a couple quick updates. Uh, the facility needs study is basically complete. Um, they would, I think, like to still visit a little more with court services. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that communication happened since I was gone and not involved. Um, I do know, I, I think with... Uh, um, uh, try, trying to think of the name of the guy from uh, the Minnehaha County that's oversees the court services and Carl Tonus. Yeah, Carl. I think <clears throat> Carl participated, so I'm not sure quite why they need more input from anybody else because Carl pretty much oversees them a little bit anyway. 
but uh, uh, basically the short of it is, and I could pull it up if you guys want me to display something, but uh, it's appearing that there's obviously a need for additional space. Um, so the, basically the study I think is providing good information so when we do meet as a committee, uh, they'll have the information to see what needs to possibly be put into a, the, the overall fix of the problem. So, but the short of it is, is uh, it looks like courts are saying they're gonna need additional space beyond what the current old courthouse will probably be able to supply. Um, in addition to that, the one thing that I guess I would like to add before we start meeting as a committee, whenever that gets put together, is I think we also need to have a, some more information outside of just what the old courthouse needs are, and that is what our needs are in the admin side. The overall fix of this, I, should, I think, should include, obviously, if we have to do any kind of an expansion, we have to include what we might need in other offices throughout the whole courthouse. So I would like to uh, move forward and see if we can have ARC Inc. Uh, visit with all the department heads and put those numbers together also. It sounded like that would be roughly maybe $5,000. Um, uh, you know, I can authorize up to $5,000 obviously, but if it goes over that, I would maybe need to have the support of the board. Um, that is something I already had in my budget for the 21 budget year, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Any questions on that? Um, to what extent has, has the judiciary been involved in the study thus far? So they, when they first met, oh, I'll let Bill take over since he was there. Um, since John wasn't around at the time when we met, I went ahead and sat in with them. And so the presiding judge came down and Judge Rasmussen came down and Carl Tharnas came down. And they explained what their situation was to the architects uh, in a meeting and what they expected right now. Um, what they're, what in essence they were saying is that they have probably over the last three months been sitting down between two to four judges down here. And since we have two courtrooms that are functional and one that's 2A is a meeting space more than anything else, that they were having terrible times in order to schedule things down here. So that was one. They were also running through some of the numbers for uh, the court cases and stuff and the growth. One of the things that Carl had told us was in the last 10 years, Lincoln County has had a 226% increase in cases. And that was kind of surprising to them for this one fact. When they look at Pennington, they look at Brown County, and they look at Minnehaha County, they say per 100,000 they expect X amount of cases. Lincoln County runs below that. We've always, we, our numbers down here have been below what our population is. And what they speculate is, is because we've had a lot of housing growth down here, tends to be high income, that we've run fewer cases for the civil, the criminal, and the juvenile. But now is it starting to develop and look a lot more like Aberdeen, Kington, or Rapid City, and Sioux Falls, they expect at some point to see a spike. And so we're already short space, but that's kind of their expectation. They don't know when that's gonna occur, but they know they don't have an explanation for why our cases per capita doesn't match everybody else in the state. So well, that's their guess, and that's what they expect to happen. How, so in this whole process, I know we talked, and we there's gonna be an advisory committee, and there's gonna be some members of the public on that advisory committee. How are we protecting through that process um, security in the courthouse, because I, don't think that those things should be common knowledge to the general public. So um, I guess I would ask that those be addressed outside of that advisory committee with court staff and the sheriff's office and things of that nature. Um, and how is that being handled? I, as far as the com composition of the committee and my understanding of it is, is they're looking at needs. So I think that space needs, that's growth needs, those are all the type of things. And I think a general understanding of there has to be security and there's security concerns, but I don't know that this committee is going to actually be putting pen to paper and drawing up plans necessarily. They, they're gonna bring those proposals here. So I think the committee is going to be, I may be wrong, but 
addressing the needs, the space opportunities, and the general, the, the big general picture. So, um, I mean, one of the, that was one of the things that the judges did talk about was just um, some of the issues for security down here that we have, but I don't know that those are things that we have to go specifically into in public and we don't talk about security issues when it comes to transports, jails, courthouses. So, yes, so unless I have a misunderstanding. Security of the judiciary is important. Judges need to be able to feel secure and safe knowing that they won't be heckled or pestered or bothered by someone who gets a bad decision or even someone who may get a good decision. So security is going to be important. I think in terms of the advisory committee from the way that I see it occurring, uh, the committee is free to discuss security concerns. Maybe that's a hot topic the public wants to ensure input is provided on. But in terms of policies, procedures, protocols, transportation schedules, even diagrams of what the blueprints that the architect may develop, stairwell locations, uh, uh, you know, how you access certain points. We are many, many, many months away from having drawings and blueprints and things like that that may or may not be accessible by the public. Um, hopefully, uh, the public can respect that process and understand. Uh, at the same time, the public is free to provide input on that process. I, I've actually received a call from a former law enforcement official who wants to serve on the committee, uh, on the advisory committee, because he wants to ensure that uh, we've got uh, safe and secure space for the judiciary to meet. So that's actually an area or topic he wanted to provide input on. In terms of uh, any type of confidential materials that would ensure the safety of the judiciary and law enforcement, I'm sure that we could uh, implement appropriate safeguards to make sure that that's, that's close hold material that won't get out into the open. I, yeah. I think we'll all agree on that. Um, any other questions on that update then? Uh, can we get through the, the memorial quickly or the way? Do you guys want me to pull up the, you, you, you obviously have seen the basic uh, schematics. Do you want me to pull those up quickly? I mean, it, anybody? John, before we move on to that though, do you need a motion or can you within the existing budget safeguards you have move forward with the needs assessment for the admin portion of the courthouse? Or do I, you need a motion from I, us? Well, it's a little bit of a gray area because if it flips over $5,000, I'll have to come back and get a motion. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion then that we authorize and approve John to do a needs assessment using ARC Inc., right? Correct. Um, to determine the, uh, the needs for the administrative portion of the courthouse. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that, Mr. Okay. Chairman. It, was there a cap that you think that it would not for sure go over? I would just like, he, he just off the cuff said he thought he could keep it around $5,000. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landeen? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. So do you want me to pull up the Veterans Memorial stuff? So basically, the Veterans Memorial, I, I'll let you know you had two options. And one did include moving the uh, existing Canton Veterans Memorial. I had that in motion from a previous meeting when I was out and doing, uh, doing the meeting by Zoom. Um, I just didn't remove it. Uh, but at, at to say the least, I think it needs to be tabled anyway until we get farther along in the other process. Because I think John is off the table. All right. I just think it's totally off the table at this time. Following a meeting that uh, we had uh, with, uh, Susan and I had with the uh, VFW and the American Legion, we more or less just said leave that alone and they intended upgrade. I think we should focus on our new uh, uh, proposal. So that said then, uh, 
do I keep moving forward and reach out and kind of get some price estimates of what it's going to take to put the flagpoles up, or are we still waiting yes. until? Yes. Yeah, I think we're Because there are probably, you know, it may be part of the courthouse renovation. It may be a lot of things, but we need to move forward. We need to know some prices. At least get so, some numbers. Yeah, get okay. some numbers. That's basically what I put it on there for, but I did want to show you the, the Is that all right with everyone? Yeah, I think as a financing mechanism, uh, we could bootstrap if there is uh, support, uh, both from this commission and the public, for uh, courthouse improvement of some kind. We can bootstrap onto that and then that way we save on mobilization fees and contractor fees and things like that. And so if there is improvements to the courthouse, we can have those contractors coming in at the same time. And then it'll be a total revamp. Correct. Because yeah. at the very least, it, if we did move forward with that, it could very well be disrupted by the project because even uh, just what we did with bat renovation stuff had some sidewalk damage and you know it just you get equipment out there it's going to cause some problems so yeah and just so the public knows these plans are calling for electrical and lighting and uh, a lot of concrete to be poured and things like that those are all things that if there is a courthouse improvement you could pull that into any kind of potential quote or bid or contract in the future so this keeps the idea of our support for the Veterans Memorial on the table. It communicates to people that it will be part of some type of courthouse improvement if that happens. If there is no support for that, we can move independently to do uh, do the memorial. Right. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, Jim, you know, you called me after that meeting on that Friday, and thank you for doing that. Yep. Um, Commissioner Schmidt, anyway. Um, yeah, I think uh, until until we get a little further down the way, you know, I, I think eventually, you know, there, there'll be a change out back here of some sort. But until we get to that point, uh, but I, I think it could encompass the whole, if there is a remodel or an annex put on for courtrooms, et cetera, that could all encompass that down in the future, you know, so... Uh, I just don't feel that the Veterans Memorial should be, uh, if there is an annex to the to the north for, for some odd reason someday, or I don't know, Jim, you may comment on this. Well, I'm just going to say one way or another, we're going to get a memorial to our veterans, and it's yeah. going to be in front of our courthouse, period. Yeah. End of statement. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I agree with that. I won't be here then, but I do support that. So uh, there's money that's been put out, and I'd, I'd like to see that remain in that account until uh, uh, Commissioner Aaron's comment, until we get down the road. And it might be months yet before we come to all that. So anyway, thank you. Okay. So kind of as guidelines, if you can get some numbers, that's fine. But everything's just going to become part of a bigger project as it, as it Sounds good. mobilizes. Okay. Yeah. I will get some numbers. Thank all you, right. John. Yep. Thank you. Uh, forgive me for being tardy, but it is 9.08, so we will have the 9.05 rezoning. Toby, are you going to lead us through it, or Sean, you want to read? This is a public hearing for an ordinance of Lincoln County regarding a change of zone request for the property legally described as the southwest quarter, except lot H1 of section 34, township 100 north, range 49 west of the 5th principal meridian, Lincoln County, South Dakota from the A1 Agricultural Zoning District to the RR Rural Residential Zoning District. Planning Commission recommends approval four to one. Location is in northwest corner of the intersection of 273rd Street and 480th Avenue near Harrisburg. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Toby Brown representing County Planning Department. Uh, this uh, petition was submitted by Eric Willardson on behalf of the Carolyn Porter Trust. Uh, this property is approximately 160 acres. The current zoning is a mix of A1 agricultural and RC rec conservation. Uh, the proposal is to change the zoning of a portion of the 160 acres, approximately 140 acres, to RR rural residential. Uh, comprehensive plan designation for this area is, is currently agricultural area. Uh, on the screen is the zoning and the regulatory floodplain for the property. Um, as you can see, uh, majority of the property is zoned um, A1 agricultural. There is a, a spot of RC rec conservation to the north side of it in association with uh, the lake. Um, there is a portion of um, regulatory floodplain on the property. However, that is not part of the rezone. That will continue to remain RC rec conservation. 
Uh, surrounding property is primarily agriculture. Again, there is some uh, RC rec conservation, but the primary use of that property is agricultural. Uh, the site does currently have a farm set and some associated buildings on it. That portion of the property will also not be rezoned. Uh, that will be left uh, A1 agricultural. A uh, concept plan was submitted with the application. Uh, up to the top of the screen, uh, that shows the lot layouts cons conceptually. Uh, the process still has to go through phase two, which is the preliminary plan and the subdivision plan process. Uh, that was tabled by the Planning Commission. On the bottom side, you'll see that uh, outlines exactly the areas that would be rezoned. Again, approximately 140 acres would be rezoned to rural residential. On the, the northwest corner of the property, or the, on the south uh, east corner of the property will remain ag, uh, as well as the farmstead, and then the RC rec conservation will remain along on the north side of the property. Uh, my understanding is the landowner is working with the game, fish, and parks on that north side of the, uh, that will remain RC rec conservation. Uh, as far as project analysis, again, in sum, uh, the application is requesting the change of zone approximately 100, 140 acres of the 160-acre parcel uh, from the A1 Agricultural District and the RC Conservation District to the RR, Rural uh, Residential District. Uh, concept is for a multi-phase single-family residential development, again, approximately 68 lots. Uh, future land use map of the comprehensive plan currently defines this as an agricultural area. Uh, however, substantial change has occurred in the vicinity of Lake Elvin over the years, um, and primarily that, that change has gone towards uh, rural residential development. Uh, just within the last two years, the county has rezoned a significant portion of uh, what is the west side of Lake Elvin. Uh, this proposed development should be compatible with existing agricultural uses in the area and uh, existing residential development in the vicinity. Um, also, that the proposal is to really preserve some of that natural environment. There's a proposed lake and some of those natural features. As far as uh, criteria, again, your comprehensive plan is your main criteria. However, we don't have any standards, but as far as standards, you could look to that this, this will be accessed off of two county hard surface roads. It shouldn't put any unreasonable burden on the local townships, um, as well as that this will provide a much needed uh, residential development uh, in a county that's uh, running low on residential, rural residential lots. Uh, so with that, I'd be happy to answer your questions that you have for staff at this time. Again, this is a public hearing in consideration of adoption of an ordinance to change uh, this property. Is there any uh, questions for staff? Toby, all of these uh, 68 lots will be septic? Yes. And we, do we have a quantification that uh, a septic will be, you know, some places are not receptive to that. That's the question. And will this require a road district? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, so the first step of that is the county does have an on-site wastewater treatment ordinance that does require that prior to issuance of a building permit uh, that the site's evaluated for compliance with state law and the county's regulations. Uh, the second part of that is yes, uh, this will require a road district uh, as part of the approval process. Toby, where are they at with their drainage and erosion plan? Um, so uh, as soon as we know if this is going to be approved or not, then uh, the engineer and myself are going to meet to discuss uh, moving forward with the preliminary plan. In conjunction with, we are working with Wank Engineering to, to make sure the analysis is complete. Have we had any resistance from any of the neighbors that are engaged in agriculture out there that this would uh, change their face at all? No, uh, the Planning Commission did conduct a public hearing. Uh, there was no, no one spoken in favor and opposition to it. They did recommend four to one uh, to, for you to approve this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. uh, to Toby, just to kind of go back a little bit on this thing, uh, this has come, and Eric, you can chime in, but this, this is a second go around on this, is that correct? Because there, there was only a one way in, one way out at one time. That's why we kind of turned it down. Is that correct? Well, a year ago, there was an application that was a little over a year ago. There was an application that was submitted for a, for development on the north side of, of the property. Uh, so it wasn't a complete, uh, what I'll call a complete plan is what they've submitted currently. Okay. There was also some question about, uh, you know, the interaction with Lake Elvin with that proposed development. So I, I would consider that one a, a separate plan and what this, what they propose now is a more com complete plan mm -hmm. uh, for the county to evaluate. And, and I see there's, Toby, if I'm right or wrong, it, it, there's two accesses, is that right? Correct. Proposed. In, in yes. and out. Proposed anyway. Yep. So, okay. All right. Thank you.
Any other questions for staff? Otherwise, I'll ask for the applicant if they want to say anything to come up and have a statement. Otherwise, we'll turn it to the audience. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Eric Willardson, Willardson on Engineering Sioux Falls. Uh, as Toby indicated, you know, we're back. This is a revised plan from the, the past, uh, more complete. It, it shows uh, the entire development uh, of the property. Obviously, it'll be done in, in phases, as you can see by the concept plan. Um, I guess with that, yeah, we have started the process with preliminary subdivision plans. There are quite a ways along on those. Um, they were tabled by planning in light of, you know, we need to get the zoning obviously passed first. We'll certainly comply with all uh, county regulations for the preliminary subdivision plans. And I guess with that, I, I would just, if there's specific questions, be happy to try and address those. Any questions for him? Eric, how big are these lots that you have proposed, these 68 lots? How big are they? They're all in excess of an acre. Most of them are an acre and a half. Uh, some of the ones are adjacent to the lake or even a little bit bigger than that, as Toby indicated. Uh, there's a couple of the lots that <clears throat> could potentially have access to the lake, and that's one of the things that Game Fish and Parks is kind of discouraging. Mm -hmm. And so we've uh, essentially left a strip on the north edge as recreation conservation, it would be our uh, intent to dedicate that to uh, game fishing parks and so that there wouldn't be a, a possibility of a legal access to the lake from those lots and I think game fishing parks is in favor of that they're also in favor of um, removing that pasture area that's adjacent to the lake uh, and turning it to rural residential and and uh, preventing livestock from uh, grazing in that uh, area that's uh, unsuitable, I guess, for agriculture row crop. So I, I guess that's a plus for game fishing parks and the lake. Very good. Any other question? Any other statement at this Thank time? Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, being a public hearing, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to the rezone? Seeing none, is there anybody that would like to speak in favor of the rezone? Seeing none, I'll turn it back to the board. It's strictly up to us. Is there a motion to approve the rezone? There is, Mr. Chairman. I move that we uh, pass the ordinance of Lincoln County regarding change of zone request for the property legally described. And I'll just refer to the uh, meeting agenda for the legal description here. Very good. Is there a second? Um, Mr. Chairman, I will second that. Okay. I'd like to hear discussion, of course. So. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the rezone. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, falls within my district. I spend a lot of time at Lake Alvin, and so when something goes on out there, I kind of like to know what's happening. Um, in 2008, my wife and I looked at purchasing a house out there. We ultimately didn't for a number of reasons, but had there been something like this available, maybe we would have rethought our decision making. There is an evolution of development going on in this specific corridor where we're moving towards more recreational lifestyle, recreational development with residential housing, uh, bracketing or being next to these kinds of recreational opportunities because it's a lifestyle that people like to live. Uh, yes, it is true. There's a lot of ag land out there, but uh, I've talked to those folks out there and there's no opposition. They're not here today. They haven't made comments in opposition to it because they understand the evolution of housing and growth and development. Just a few minutes ago, we heard from the state's attorney, uh, deputy state's attorney, about uh, growth and development and why we don't have as many types of uh, court cases as what other counties have. And uh, frankly, I think it's because of the social demographic makeup of the county. 
And frankly, I think we're very fortunate to be able to have benefited from responsible growth and development. And I think this is the next step. Having this type of growth and development uh, in a recreational area is going to help increase the property tax base, but also it meets a demand that people have for wanting to live next to water features and things like that and have a recreational lifestyle along with residential development. It's not a shot in the eye towards agriculture by any means, it's just the opposite. In fact, the people who own this land out there were uh, or are, were our farmers at one time and they see the opportunity to be able to develop their land uh, for the future. And so uh, those are just, those are my primary reasons for supporting it, Mr. Chairman. Very good, any other comments, questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, hi. Sure. Uh, Eric, you can just remain seated. What, give me a, a, a bird's eye view of how many years uh, before everything falls into place. I mean, if it gets granted, uh, are we talking 10 years or five years? If I could, Eric, I, I'm gonna get a motion to have okay. you come up to, okay. just to record it. Thank right. you. As long as I don't have to touch it. Um, no, th this will take many, many years. I Obviously it's market driven, but at, at least 10. 10, and th yeah. This is a lot of lots. Even phase one, if yeah. we get three or four five houses a, a year built on this, I think I think so. It, it'll be a very gradual uh, development. Uh, fortunate to have paved roads on two sides, or, or both sides of it. Um, it should, again, mesh well with the existing development that's going on uh, and, and probably be a similar pace to, to what's happening on the west and north side of the lake. Any other questions, Commissioner? Yeah, uh, yeah, and you, uh, as far as uh, Commissioner Schmidt brought up the uh, septic issues, you don't foresee uh, some of these lots en ending up with a mound system, or you think they'll, they'll all pass the perk test? And I, 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 you know, I'm just I you're guessing. So. I don't. Um, you know. Obviously, Lincoln County has a lot of <clears throat> groundwater. Yeah, um, I can't tell you how many. Systems I've redesigned this year because of groundwater. Yeah. This to me is not an area that's okay. that's uh, su susceptible to that. Uh, obviously, all of the lots are larger than required. The one acre that's required uh, by state rules, and again, all of the septic systems will need to be designed by a, sure. a professional engineer yep. by ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Chairman? Yep. I'd like to go back. Uh, Commissioner Aarons, your words were very well spoken. However, I look at this and I'm thinking, not necessarily that I'm in opposition, but there are other unintended consequences that one could look at. When you are taking um, a substantial amount of agricultural land, you set the course for amount of similar situations coming because the demand, you are correct, for people to move into the country is, is very large. And um, this will exacerbate, in my mind, that whole area. I have spent a lot of time out there as well and understand the uh, criteria people like. I just wish they would clean that up so it wouldn't have so much E. coli and other kinds of bacteria in it, which we need to take into consideration as well. I am concerned about like a road district, for example, when you put that many uh, potentially cars out there, you're going to have to also have the protection from our sheriff's department. And we also struggle to have enough deputies on the road at any one time. So while growth is good, and while it will add to the tax base and while it will add to the school systems, there are situations which, to me, we have to think through. And at this point in time, I'm not prepared to uh, give my full support to this, but that's just my opinion. Commissioner Landine, any comments? I, vo I originally voted yes on this for the rezone and planning and zoning, but it was with a lot of hesitancy. And the reason the preliminary plan wasn't approved was because the erosion plan wasn't completed and there were some 
There's also a drainage plan that's required. I concur with Commissioner Schmidt, Schmidt's observations um, about the what it's going to do to other county resources right now. Um, I haven't seen the plan for the road district. Who's going to do snow removal out there? Is it going to be the county um, or is it going to be the residents themselves? So I think there was a reason that the preliminary plan was submitted at the same time as the rezone so that we would know exactly what was happening out there. And we don't know that yet. So um, I'm not ready to support this yet either until the um, preliminary plan is more finalized. All right. If we're ready, I'll ask Sean to call the roll. Oh, I'll make one more comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I didn't I didn't like this when it first come around. Uh, Jim, you remember that? And Eric, bear with me. Uh, uh, I guess uh, you know the the downslope on that north side. It kind of bothers me with those northern lots uh, going into the lake, and uh, that kind of. Uh, makes me a little nervous and then I'm a little concerned with the septic and 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 the drains and all that stuff so but uh, uh, I, I guess uh, I guess it's come a time it, it'll it's going to be years before it's totally developed uh, as Eric has said so and uh, we might be facing economic times where uh, the developer will just sit on the, some of this stuff for a while so anyway that's I guess I, I can I can support it with with that. So, Mr. Mr. Yes. Willardson, do you can you respond to some of these concerns that were raised just now? I mean, do you have concrete answers to these questions? Certainly. Um, in, in reference to the the drainage plans, um, we presented a plan that addressed the drainage in a general manner which is what's required with preliminary subdivision plans. Certainly, uh, I don't think any of the commissioners would expect the owner of this property to spend that kind of money up front for engineering when there's no guarantee that the project will even move forward. So I think that's why the preliminary subdivision plans, while they were tabled, there's nothing in the preliminary subdivision plan that would would put up a red flag that that there's something we're trying to put something over on on the county. I think the scrutiny that was put into my plan uh, went way above what was probably required at a preliminary subdivision plan level now certainly if this is and and i think that's what the planning commission didn't understand was because i've done i've put any number of preliminary plans in front of this commission over the last 20 years and all of them have included the same thing this plan included so i think there was and, and toby and i talked about it it did go a little I guess the review added some things in a, an erosion control plan. Um, we're not proposing any kind of earth moving operations that would require uh, an erosion control plan at this stage. Certainly, uh, as a, if the project moves along, we'll comply with all uh, the regulations for the development engineering plans, final plans, drainage, uh, road districts, um, yes, there'll be a road district. The maintenance of the roads, the cost of the roads, upkeep, snow removal, that's all by the road district, just as it is in most other uh, rural residential developments uh, in this area and, and across the county. So um, I think the first time when it was denied, it was maybe incomplete it didn't go far enough as to how the entire thing would develop over time um, so that's what we spent the last year working on uh, is developing a plan that could be phased in uh, it, it is a very desirable way to live 
Um, this is an area of the county that uh, has continued to develop like this, and to me it makes sense. It is, a, again, a very desirable way uh, that South Dakotans want to live. Eric, uh, just if I may interrupt, you would follow in that numerical thing on the phases, right? Phase one would be first and second, third, fourth. That's how it would be developed? Or That's is that the general right? concept now is phase one is, is that, I'll call it pasture land yeah. uh, around the lake. When you say you're concerned about turning that pasture land into rural residential, I think the rural residential uh, effect on the lake it w is way uh, less than the pasture uh, that that's currently uh, going on there. You're, Commissioner Schmidt, you spoke of the E. coli in the lake. Uh, lake Alvin's been closed any number of times during mm -hmm. the summer because of a spike mm -hmm. in E. coli. Um, I would submit that that's not coming from septic systems in the county adjacent to the lake. It's from runoff from the ag land mm -hmm. directly into the lake. I would agree. And I guess that's what we're trying to, you know, that's one of the benefits from this, is it would eliminate that direct runoff, you know, from this ag land on a very steep slope uh, that goes right into the lake. Yeah, I, I'm, yep. Toby, I've got a question for you with regard to the nature of the preliminary plans here. I mean, would you agree with Mr. Willitson's assessment that he's not only um, uh, complied with the standard procedures you put forth, but that he's included extra material in there or gone above and beyond what is normally required? Um, you know, I'll go, I'll go back to staff's analysis of the submittals is that we deemed it to be incomplete and some deficiencies. And so um, part of that is, is that, again, it was tabled by the Planning Commission. And if this is approved, then, you know, staff will work with Mr. Willitson to make sure that those deficiencies are met before it's presented back to the Planning Commission. What are the deficiencies that need to be remedied here in, your est in the staff analysis? Um, I, I think there, there was a checklist of some items that we had. And again, this, this goes back to review by our consultants would be by Clark Engineering and Wank Engineering. Um, there, there was some, you know, as Commissioner Landing pointed out, that there's a requirement that there be erosion control plan. Um, and so, again, in the past, I'm going to say um, maybe Mr. Wilson didn't submit those along with it. Uh, but currently, we're making sure that all of the requirements are met in the preliminary plan. And so that was one such item. The other such item is the drainage plan. Um, there, there's just some just dialogue that needs to take place between our consultants and our staff and Mr. Willitson prior to that moving forward with it. But as Mr. Willitson said, is that he's looking at additional costs to the, to the applicant to complete that because there would require some surveying and some on-site work. And so that will cost some, uh, some additional money. So again, we broke this out. So the first step is, is if, if the rezoning is approved, then they will continue with that. If it's not, then that will just will not be proceeded with. Yeah, I want, I want to get down to the nub of this issue, though, because if there is outstanding do-outs, so is it the standard procedure for the county that an er erosion control plan and a drainage plan be submitted prior to this type of hearing? Is that the standard process? Um, so the... So there's two separate processes. The first would be governed by your zoning ordinance, which is the rezoning. The second part is, is the subdivision, which is the site development of the property. Under that ordinance, um, it does say that that would be submitted in conjunction with it. We typically haven't done that, and typically we, we have splintered off at some phase with that because of the costs associated with it. So I'm going to say it's in order... So there's a step process to this. The first step would be the rezoning would be granted, the land use part of it. The second step is the subdivision part of it to make sure that, 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 the, that the, the site development is in compliance with the ordinance. 
in conjunction with that, that application would be recommended by the Planning Commission. It also comes before you. So there, so there is a second step of approval that you will have uh, with this development, and that is the subdivision plan. So if I understand correctly, what, what we've been doing as part of a process and including in what's happening here, we have not previously enforced this notion or idea, I guess requirement, that you come to the table, someone like Mr. Willitson, come to the table with an erosion control plan and a drainage plan, be primarily because of the cost. Do I understand that correctly? Some, some have. The, the, the previous rezone that we had in 2018 with Lakeview Estates, uh, that was presented full. It did meet the requirements of the ordinance. It was brought forward in conjunction with it. Uh, this one was tabled by the Planning Commission because of the deficiencies. So those kinds of deficiencies then are not necessarily required, but, excuse me, they haven't been demanded in the past, even though we do have a requirement for it, uh, right? It is a standard of the ordinance. Yes. Okay. Yep. And so if somebody wants to come in here then and probably potentially achieve success, they have got to come in. They have to come in with those plans ahead of time, right? I mean, is, is that my understanding? Like, if you, if you want to be able to get this property rezoned, you've got to come forward with, in this instance, an erosion control plan and a drainage plan. That's the requirement of the, of the subdivision ordinance. However, again, this is a two-step process where, um, where it's the zoning part of it, and then the second step of this would be the site development part of it. Um, in the past, uh, this board has looked at the site development process as a criteria for the zoning because of concerns with drainage, uh, erosion, and runoff, and those different types of things. But it isn't, per se, a standard that we would have to approve that at the same time. So my next question, then, is specifically with regard to this property. Does staff have erosion control concerns and drainage concerns? We, we have concerns on the subdivision plan that those items will need to be enhanced in the preliminary plan before that staff would recommend approval of the preliminary plan to the Planning Commission. So let me ask this question of Mr. Willitson then. Mr. Willitson, after you heard what Toby just said, do you have any response to that? I have, if you'd like to look, I have the list of comments that we received and also our responses and, and how um, we addressed them. Quite frankly, I, may, I must have missed it. I didn't know that you couldn't have a street name in excess of 14 characters. So we can fix that. Yeah, I get it's, that. It, those are the easy ones. I get that. Ones. That's low-hanging fruit. It's but, this. but with regard to the erosion, there seems to be some opposition you're getting that I can hear on the board today. With regard to the big ticket items, which you previously said you thought were kind of expensive, and I get that part, erosion control plan and drainage plan. And if anybody has spent any amount of time here in Lincoln County developing property, they would know that the big watchword is drainage. But then if you want to come here and ask for something without, that doesn't like meet the letter of the statute, the ordinance, you know, what I'm saying is, is do you have the capability to come back and address these concerns before, you, you know, in order to get the rezone? Do you have the capability to come back with an erosion control plan and to come back with the drainage plan and just check the boxes that Toby has asked to be done? Uh, absolutely. Um, we, we can solve all those. Um, are you willing then if I withdrew my motion and tabled this, are you willing to work with Toby and do those things to maybe address some of these concerns? Now, I'm not saying that that guarantees some kind of vote. Uh, you know, those are individual commissioners. They can decide on their own. But are you willing to put more of the work in with Toby to get in compliance with the statute, with the ordinance, I mean, of submitting those things 
at the time of the application, erosion control plan, drainage plan? I would say yes. Um, obviously, it's the owner's ultimate decision right. um, to, to move this forward, but I think as much as they have into this now, um, they would like to continue that. I think we would, we would certainly work with them. I, I worked with Toby, and we agreed to, because the preliminary subdivision plan was tabled, and I, ble I believe the Planning Commission met again last night, and so we agreed we'd wait another month so that we could get the commission to weigh in on the rezone part of it. Um, obviously, we can't get our preliminary subdivision plan approved without the zoning being approved. Right. So no, we're, we're willing to work to address these issues, and I think we need to, to speak to that. Um, we'll absolutely address the drainage, I know drainage is huge in this county uh, and we will address it. it we did address it on the preliminary plans in a general sense it's this is the direction of the drainage uh, the drainage goes into the lake um, that's a foregone conclusion um, and we will address that with detention requirements uh, sediment control erosion control uh, at the appropriate time. And we certainly will work with uh, Toby and, and the consultants that they had review this to try and alleviate or at least put their mind at ease that yes, we will address these items. Uh, we know we can't move forward with approval of the engineering plans, you know, unless we do that. Yeah, I don't think anyone's asking for gold-plated curb and gutter here. I think they're just asking meet the standard requirements set forth uh, by staff, uh, just simply enforcing the uh, the ordinance. No, we we have every intention of, yeah. of working with Toby, his staff, uh, the consultant, and, and trying to answer your questions and, and put your mind at ease that this will be a first-class development that meets or exceeds all the all the criteria in the ordinances. Mr. Chairman, with that, I would withdraw my motion, make a substitute motion to table uh, the uh, ordinance change and or to you, table this issue. Commissioner Gillespie, you have moved your second. Yes, I'll, I'll uh, table uh, my second. Uh, and then, also. Commissioner Aarons, your motion is to table for a, is a specific period of time? Well, um, uh, Toby, if this were to be tabled by the commission, do you have a recommendation as to what the amount of time should be? As Mr. Wilson mentioned, um, where it'll be the revised preliminary plan would be on the planning commission agenda in January, so we could bring this back to you in February. Would probably be the earliest. Toby, uh, is that I, when you think it'll be out of planning and zoning? Yes. And then bring it back at the same time as the yeah. rezone request. Yes. Yeah, so then we'll so then we'll uh, re-advertise it as a as a preliminary plan slash rezone. I think that would work the best. Then we Kay. know what we're actually voting just on. Just so I'm sure, then uh, Commissioner, and your motion is just to table it until after the February. Uh, Planning and zoning meeting. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Is there a second to that effect? I'll uh, second that. All right. I have a motion and second. Sorry, Commissioner Gillespie. Oh, that's fine. Uh, if there's no further questions, I'd ask for a motion to, uh, or not a motion, excuse me, Sean to call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landeen? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Toby, sorry I'm late on the next one, but. This is a public hearing for an ordinance of Lincoln County regarding a change of zone request for the property legally described as Zon Tract 1, except north 176 feet thereof, and except the south 208.7 feet thereof in the southwest quarter of section 24, township 100 north, range 51 west of the 5th principal meridian, Lincoln County, South Dakota, from the A1 Agricultural Zoning District to the C Commercial Zoning District. Planning Commission recommends approval five to zero. Location is 27068 469th Avenue near T. Good morning again. 
the applicant for this petition is Brian Gady. Um, this site is approximately a little over four acres in size. It's approximately, and it's a little hard to judge here, but across the road is, is the corporate limits of the city of T, but the closest would be approximately 500 feet to the southwest uh, of the property would be the corporate limits of the city of T. Uh, this property is improved uh, with a single family dwelling and some associated structures or accessory structures on the property. Uh, current zoning is A1 agricultural. Uh, the proposal is to change the zoning of a portion of the property, approximately three acres to commercial. Uh, future land designation of this is urban expansion area, specifically the city of T. On the screen is the zoning and the regulatory floodplain for the area. Um, as you can see, uh, the property uh, to the north, south, and to the, or to the north and the south is like zoning and like use. Uh, the property across Highway uh, 1, County Highway 111 is annexed into the city of Teen is currently being developed for residential uh, development. Uh, the property to the east and adjacent um, is part of uh, uh, industrial development that's been occurring over the last 20 years. It is like zone commercial and like use, uh, warehousing, storage, and, and, and like. There is regulatory floodplain on the property, so any development on the property will require a Lincoln County floodplain development permit. Uh, the concept plan that was submitted with the application um, since this was within the City of uh, T subdivision authority, the City of T has weighed in on the concept plan and the site plan. Um, they don't have any particular issues as, as it currently is. Um, the proposal is to have outside storage specifically for recreational vehicles um, on the property. As proposed, there would be no site improvements, um, so it, there wouldn't be any, um, any gravel or any type of surfacing place uh, in the site uh, location. As far as project analysis, again, this is changing approximately three acres of a 4.3 acre parcel from the A1 Agricultural District to the C Commercial District. A future land use plan does identify this as urban expansion area, the City of T. Uh, this proposal is consistent with the City of T comprehensive plan. They've designated this uh, particular property as future commercial area. Uh, property of the East has been subdivided and rezoned to commercial uses over the last 20 years. Uh, this proposed development should be compatible with existing development uh, to the north and the south. Um, however, any proposed use of the property will require a conditional use permit. And as part of that, staff has uh, worked with the applicant to say that we will require screening and some security to take place, which is what uh, the county does require on any outside storage um, uh, use property. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, for staff. Again, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of of this uh, petition. Um, there, uh, there was no one that spoke in favor and opposition at the public hearing. Staff hasn't received any comments uh, in regards to this uh, proposal since. Thank you, Toby. Is there any questions for Toby or staff? Uh, I'll ask if the applicant would like to speak. Come up and. Good morning, everybody. I'm Good Brian morning. Gady. Um, I guess I don't know which guys would like to hear from me, but this is our beginning plan. We'd like to get this rolling and get some outdoor storage on the property and get it making some income. This is our plan. Brian, let me let me light the fire here for you. Okay. Um, some of the concerns people have had in the past is security, lighting, mm -hmm. uh, fences, people may want to break in to outdoor storage sheds, uh, video cameras, security plan, Think, tell me about it. What can you say about all that? Well, um, I'm an electrician by trade, so <coughs> I'm gonna take care of lighting and some electrical around the property, and we plan to put a fence around it. Um, cameras to be in the future, I guess, but we're planning right away to put cameras on it. Um, yeah, I guess. Do you live right close by, don't you? We live in Sioux Falls on yeah. the west side of town there. And then my partner is actually Mark Putsky, which is Putsky Well Drilling right to the south of the property. And he lives? He lives a right, mile away from it. Right there. Yeah. <coughs> Any other questions for him? How many units is it going to have? Well, we're hoping for 40 to 50 units. But we plan for more. We haven't actually taken campers out there and tried to, you know, see how many we can actually fit based on 
the demand and how many people that we get wanting to store their camper there, we'll make a determination of how many we can actually fit and move, maneuver around safely. So this will all be outdoor storage? Yep. Will you need to raise the topography because of the ponding? I'm sorry? Will you need to raise the surface of the ground for the topography? I, on one of the images I saw some ponding. Right now we're not going to because we're not a, we had a plan originally that was drawn with a retention pond and stuff and then we were told that we weren't able to do that because we're in the flood way more than just the flood plain and then we have to go through some additional steps but at the moment, we plan on just parking them on the grass. OK. Any other questions? Thank you. Turn it to the audience. Is there anybody from the audience that would like to speak in uh, opposition to this rezone? Showing none. Is there anybody in favor that would like to speak to this rezone? Seeing none, I'll turn it back to the board. Born, it's up to your decision again. Mr. Chairman, I'll move for approval for the rezone. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to re, uh, approve the rezone. Is there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, I get to ask Sean to uh, call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Congratulations. Is Terry here, or you got this, or got Toby? You want something yet? No, I'll just turn this off. Thank oh. you. The public hearing. Oh, the sorry. Skipping one. Okay. And that's why I got it. <sighs> Almost got me there. Oh, you did get me. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so we're having a public hearing to supplement the 24-7 budget um, for the cash transfer. What I need to do is I need to be able to transfer $25,000 to 24-7. Um, that was not budgeted for. I will do the transfer into the 2483-7100. That way I'm sure that I have enough cash funds to end the year. Okay, is there any questions for Madam Auditor? Given a public hearing, I need to ask the audience if there's anybody that would like to speak concerning this matter. Quiet group today, I'll take that. Uh, back to the board, I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. Motion and second, and thank you. Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Now it's 10, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, Terry. Good morning. Good morning. I have one item for you to, uh, I'm looking for approval. You can now authorize the chair to sign an agreement with the uh, DOT for the uh, bridge removal grant for a structure 42-200-125. I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, Gillespie, you yep. on the second? Yep. Any other questions for that? Sean, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, are we finished? No, we need an executive yeah, session. Executive session. Oh, very good. Oh, yes, we have our... So I oh, would... um, I will need to notify. I need to leave mm -hmm. at... So I'll probably exit it now. So, but I'll I'll take your motion to for executive session. I would uh, move to go into executive session under SDCL 125-2 sub one to discuss um, our employee evaluations. Second. Motion is seconded. Is there? And then I'll have to turn it over to you when you come back out. Okay. John, please call the roll. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes, you're in executive session. Thank you, everyone. Have a Merry Christmas. Sean? Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Motion carries.
Um, that was a motion to exit. Motion to adjourn. Gillespie. Yeah. Second. Farm. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Commissioner Gillespie? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Landine? Yes. Motion carries now or adjourn. We you. are. You bet. Yeah.